Welcome to Lesson 1.7 in Patterns and Relations. This lesson is going to concentrate on reading and writing equations. Students will learn to write an equation for a mathematical sentence and a sentence for an equation. Students will understand that an equation is a statement that two quantities are equal. Students will understand that when we equate an algebraic expression to a number, the variable no longer represents any number, but now represents a specific number. So what does that all mean? Well, in easier terminology, you're going to take a mathematical an equation, you're going to turn it into words, called a phrase, you're going to take that phrase of words and you're going to turn it back into an equation. You have to understand what an equation is and what is not an equation. And lastly, if you have an equation with a variable in it, a single variable, then you can actually solve to find the answer to that variable. So you'll be able to figure out what the variable value is. So we have learned up until this now, up to now, that an expression is a mathematical sentence without an equal sign. That's what an expression is. There's no equal sign in an expression. Until you are told what that variable is in an expression, you can't solve it. But when we told you what the value of x was, then you could complete it and fill out a table of values. Now that you've done expressions, it's now time to extend this to an equation. So, the definition of an equation. It's a mathematical sentence with an equal sign. Mathematical sentence with an equal sign. That's the first test to figure out if something's an equation. If what you're looking at has an equal sign, it passes stage one. The second part, the left side and the right side, have to be equal to each other. So if you can find a mathematical sentence that has a left side and a right side, and it has an equal sign, and the left side and right side are actually the same, then it is an equation. So, for example, I'm going to do the first one here. 3 plus 4 equals 7. So the first question we ask you is, is this an equation? Why or why not? Now, if you take a look at this, it does have an equal sign, so that's good. And 3 plus 4 is 7 on the left, and on the right we already have a 7, so this is an equation. Now the reasons for it being an equation, it has an equal sign. And in addition to that, the left side and the right side balance. And what I mean by balance, they are equal to each other. All right, I've done the first one for you. I want you to take a look at the next three. And I want you to write down whether it's an equation or not, or an expression, I guess. And then you have to tell me why you think that is so. So pause the recording and take a look at finishing this. Well, you can start it up when we're ready to continue. Okay, 18 is equal to 3 times 6. It has an equal sign. 3 times 6 is 18. And this is 18, so the sides are equal. It has an equal sign. That makes this an equation. Okay, so it has an equal sign. And the term that we use to tell the left side and the right side are equal is it balanced, balances. Okay, that means that the left side and the right side are equal. Let's take a look at the next one. 4 times 3 
equals 14 take away 2. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. 14 take away 2 is 12. So this is an equation. Y has an equal sign. And the left side is equal to the right side. And we use the term balances. Think of it as the large teeter-totter. 12 people of equal weight are on the left. 12 people of equal right weight are on the right. And they balance. So this was a teeter-totter. It would actually be straight across. OK, 3 times 8. First thing you check for is an equal sign. Well, we don't have one. That means this is not an equal sign. This is actually an expression. And the reason for that is there's no equal sign. Okay, turn the page, you'll find the next two. So if you haven't already done it, pause the recording and do it. If you have, we'll just continue. 2 plus 6 equals 12 minus 5. Well, 2 plus 6 is 8, and 12 minus 5 is 7. So this is what they're trying to tell you, that 8 is the same as 7. And of course it is not. So even though it does have an equal sign, this is not an expression because the left side and the right side do not balance. So it's not an equal, not an equation. It's not even an expression either because it has an equal sign. It's not an equation. Okay, and the reason for that, the left side does not balance. with the right side. The next one. 3 times 12 is greater than 4. Well, 3 times 12 is 36. And 36 is greater than 4. But we're trying to determine whether this is an equation or not. Since there's no equal sign, this is neither. This is not an equation. And the reason is simple, no equal sign. So even though this is a true statement, that 36 is greater than 4, it's not an equation. OK, so next comes creating an equation from a phrase. Last year, we learned about the words that could be used for mathematical functions. I put them in a table for you, and, we, and you had to find words that meant adding, and find words that meant subtracting, dividing, and uh, multiplying. So we're going to be using those words now in an equation. And we're going to take uh, a number, sorry, a phrase, and we're going to turn that phrase into an equation. So we can create an expression from a phrase by converting the words to a mathematical sentence. For example, 8 increased by 3 means 8 increased by 3. So you have 8 to start with, and you're increasing that 8 by 3. The second one, we can use a variable a number multiplied by 7 and increased by 4. So here's my number. I'm going to multiply it by 7, 7 times 7, and, and I'm going to increase that by 4. Okay? I want you to start putting the coefficients, the numbers, in front. Even though you can do this this way, a number multiplied by 7, it's not the way that we normally write numbers down. So n7 is not incorrect. i just like you to change it to be 7n. I'll probably let you get away for it, with it for a while, but eventually I'm going to start telling you you have to do it. Okay, let's take and apply this to an equation. The phrase that I've got here is 6 times a number is 24. So I've got to take the left side and the right side, and I've got to turn them into mathematical expressions. So the is always represents an equal sign. The 24 by itself just means 24. On the left side, I have the phrase 6 times a number. Well, to get 6 times a number, it's going to be 6 times the number. Now, we don't like having the x in there because the x now looks like 6xn. 
So it may it actually looks like there's two variables there. So this is 6n is equal to 24. That is your equation. Okay. The next one says twice a number decreased by 12 is 20. Well, let's take a look at this. We have the is. Remember where that one is? That's just right there. That's your equal sign. We know the right-hand side is 20, so we can put that in. The left side is twice a number decreased by 12. Well, we know that twice a number means taking a number and doubling it or multiplying it by 2. That's your 2 times n, or twice the number. Now I have to decrease that number by 12. So taking and decreasing the number by 12. So I have 2n minus 12 equals 20. Left side, right side, and an equal sign. The next one, I want you to see if you can do the next three. So pause the recording and give it a try. Okay. 8 decreased by half a number is 17. So if I have 8 and I want to decrease it by something, I'm going to subtract something from that 8. So I need to decrease it by half a number. Well, half a number is n divided by 2 or n over 2. And I know that that is 17. So 8 decreased by half a number is 17. 5 times a number increased by 12 is 4. So 5 times a number, well, that's 5 times a number. Increased means to add 12. The is is the equal sign, 4. So there you go, 5n plus 12 equals 4. Now, this one's backwards. It starts with the 4 is. 4 is 7 multiplied by a number. So that is 7n. So far, then, we've gone from phrases, words, into the equation. Now let's take and go the other direction. Let's create a phrase for the following expressions. Now the one thing you cannot do is you're not allowed to read it out from left to right. You have to use some words which are a little more descriptive than times, plus, minus, or divide. So those are the names you're not allowed to use. You have to actually use your brain. So the first thing I've got to do is turn this 3x plus 2 into words. So, I'm not allowed to go 3 times a number plus 2. That's not using your brain. What I'm going to say is triple a number increased by 2. Now, I know the equal sign represents an is, and now I can put down 7. You'll notice it's a little bit more thought required. You're not allowed just to stick down what you would write. 4x minus 8 equals 15. You can't write that down, but you've got to change it into words. So when I multiply something by 4, I can say something like the product of 4 and a number. Remember, product means to multiply, right? It's the result of multiplying. The product of 4 and the number, that's my 4x, decreased by 8, is 15. There we go. The next one. 7 equals n over 4 plus 8. Well, the n over 4, I've got to think of something unique. I just cannot say it's n divided by 4. But when you divide something by 4, you're taking a quarter of them. So I could say a quarter of n. Or I could use the word uh, in groups of 4. That would be the same thing as dividing by 4. Or maybe I could use um, the quotient, which is the result of dividing, the quotient of n and 4. So let's put this in. Starting off, we have 7 is. 7 is the number, the equal sign is is. Now I have to do n over 4. So I'm going to use a quarter of n, or a quarter of a number. And 7 is a quarter of a number 
Now what else happens to this? I've got the plus 8 here. So you can't say plus 8. You have to actually use your brain. So a quarter of a number, uh, I'm going to use raised by 8. A little bit more thought required. Turn your page. Time for your assignment. Page 36, number 1 to 8. 